This is my first video update coming to you from Athens, Greece on this Saturday morning. Let's talk about some news. Boy, do we have a lot of stuff to, uh, to talk about. First, let's do an update with my clown world from yesterday, which was about the uh, Finnish Prime Minister, Sanna Marin, and her, uh, her video that was released and uh, went viral of her dancing, partying, boozing, boozing it up with her friends. And uh, the drug test that she said she was uh, going to get. Well, I didn't realize yesterday that the reason she decided to submit to a drug test is because during that video, all of the, the Davos elite cool kids that were dancing and boozing it up they were uh, screaming that they're part of the flower gang, like the white powdery substance stuff. And from what I understand in Finland, when you say you're part of the flower gang or the flower group or something like that, it means, well, you're doing the white powdery substance, the stuff that, uh, that Alensky loves to do so much. <laughs> well, that is why the um, prime minister of Finland decided to take a drug test to show that she wasn't uh, high on the stuff that Elensky is, uh, is always high on. So I didn't understand that at first. Why did she want to take a drug test? Okay, she was drinking and partying, but I had no idea that they were yelling in the video. They were singing, yelling, screaming, shouting that they were part of the, uh, the flower gang. That I did not know. So that explains why Santa Marine took a drug test. And uh, she was also on duty from what I understand. She wasn't on holiday. This wasn't like, you know, she was taking a couple of days off so she could party and booze it up and dance and do whatever. She was actually on duty. She was, you know, the prime minister of Finland and that's a 24 hour day, seven day a week job. And, you know, she was, she was obviously not thinking about her duties as prime minister <laughs> when uh, she was making that video anyway. Um, another video came out, another video, and this video is, uh, from what I understand, was this the same evening or was this a different night? Because I've heard accounts saying that this video is from a different day, a different night, and I've heard people say this is all the same, this is the same evening, and it looks like she's wearing the same clothes, um, that she was wearing during the dance, um. The dance video at the apartment and it looks like she was at the club wearing the same clothes anyway she was at a club she was at a nightclub spotted at a nightclub and she was partying with uh with friends and stuff and um she was uh she was dirty dancing with a rock star from what i gather not her husband but uh but a rock star and the name of this rock star is Let's see here. Let me find it. <laughs> what a what a crazy story this is. Uh, and this is not my clown world, by the way. But um, she was partying and dirty dancing with Olavi Usivirta, and uh, well, you know she's she's married. I guess her her husband was with her partying as well. I don't know. I don't know what the hell's going on. But she was definitely uh, cozying up to a rock star. <laughs> All right. Okay, whatever. Uh, that's, not the, that's not the story. E even though that could be the story, that's not the story. I'm just going to leave it there. I'm not going to get into all of this stuff with, with her. She's obviously, I, I, in my opinion, in my opinion, she's obviously not, uh, not mature enough to to take on the role of uh, Prime Minister of Finland. And she's definitely not mature enough or ready to, to take on Russia. <laughs> That's for sure. And uh, she should be thinking about Finland's entrance into NATO and inflation and an energy crisis and all of these things. And she should be working hard to solve those problems. And uh, if you want to party it up, well, then maybe being Prime Minister is not for you. But... Um, the real story here is that I went out to Twitter 
and I decided to just take a look and see what all of the, the geniuses <laughs> at Twitter were saying about this. And you would not believe what the people at Twitter were saying. Okay, they were saying this is misogynistic. If this was a man, you know, people wouldn't be, uh, wouldn't be coming down so hard on, on her. That's not true. Uh, if this was a guy dancing and boozing it up, yeah, I, I would be coming down hard on him and people would be coming down hard on him if he was the prime minister and he was boozing it up and partying, especially during these times, really tense, um, difficult days that we are living through. Yeah, I would be just as upset. But anyway, you heard that. You heard uh, people saying, well, Boris Johnson had seven kids and no one's complaining about that. Well, <laughs> I think people are missing the the nuance and the context of, uh, of all of this. And then we, and then I read uh, a lot of tweets talking about how Bill Clinton did the same thing and no one was uh, upset about that. Well, that's wrong. Bill Clinton, uh, he did terrible things, including with, uh, with Lewinsky in the Oval Office. And uh, he got impeached for that. And the only reason that Bill Clinton was rehabilitated was because of the crazy neoliberal left on Twitter and the Democrat Party rehabilitated him. I mean, people wanted Clinton gone, but it was the globalists that actually rehabilitated Bill Clinton, the same globalists that puppeteer and control uh, Santa Marin. But the funniest part of all of this, what was I getting to? The funniest part of all of this was that I would say 90% of all the tweets, all the tweets that were uh, upset about the fact that uh, people are complaining about the, uh, the Finnish prime minister and her partying videos. Those tweets were blaming it on Russia and on Putin. <laughs> I'm not joking. I am not joking. Everyone on Twitter, 90% of the people on Twitter were saying that these videos were leaked by the KGB. This is all part of Putin's plan. And if you're criticizing Santa Marin for partying, well, you're a Putin troll. You're a KGB spy. You're a Russian propagandist. I was just like, oh my God, this, this is Russia's fault. This is Putin's fault now. <laughs> this, Trump's fault, Putin's fault, Trump's fault, Putin's fault. <laughs> Anyway, I just thought I would get that out to everybody. I was absolutely floored. I, I didn't expect it. I didn't expect that uh, even this incident, the first video, now this second video where she's dirty dancing with a rock star, um, this is going to be blamed on Putin as well. <laughs> it was Putin that released these videos to weaken Santa Marin, to weaken Finland because uh, she is such a strong and capable leader and she's really sticking it to uh, Russia. That was pretty much the narrative that people on Twitter were, were coming up with. <laughs> okay, well, let's see what happens when uh, Santa Marin and, uh, and the Estonian Prime Minister, when, uh, when they decide to create this, uh, this blockade of the Baltic Sea. Let's see how she handles that. Is everyone confident that Santa Marin is going to handle that well? Let's just wait and see. So, let's, uh, since we're talking about crazy leadership and uh, incapable leadership. By the way, I wonder if Santa Marin is going to be another victim of the Aletsky curse. I wonder if she is going to fall victim to the Aletsky curse. One person that is falling victim to the Aletsky curse, no doubt about it, is uh, Olaf Schultz. And since we're talking about bad leadership, well, Olaf Schultz, he is right up there with, uh, with Boris Johnson as far as bad leaders go. And, uh, Olaf Schultz is embroiled in a tax fraud scandal. And obviously this tax fraud scandal has nothing to, to really do with, uh, with tax fraud. That's not the reason why people want him out. People are using this tax fraud scandal to push Olaf Schultz out of office so that uh, they can find a way to, to avoid this, uh, this energy crisis slash deindustrialization de slash recession for Germany. They want out and they realize that uh, the only way out is to get rid of Schultz, to somehow get rid of the crazy Greens, and then to somehow find a rapprochement with Russia. And we even have the, uh, 
I think the vice, the vice president of the parliament, if I'm not mistaken, the deputy speaker of the German parliament, Wolf, Wolfgang Kubitschi, say that Germany should certify Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline and use it to get enough fuel for Russia to get through the upcoming cold season. He said that the move must be taken as soon as possible to fill our gas storage for the winter. And he's a politician for the Free Democratic Party of Germany. And uh, he's exactly right. <laughs> he's exactly right. He's also part of the coalition, by the way. He's part of the ruling coalition. So they've got, they've cooked up this tax fraud scandal. P perhaps it's true. It probably is true that Olaf Schultz is involved in some sort of tax fraud scandal. He's going to testify about this scandal, stuff like that. I have no doubt about it that this stuff is, is probably true. But is it serious enough to, uh, to boot Schultz out of uh, office? No, it's not. But um, is it going to be used to get Schultz out of office? Absolutely. I would, I would bet 50%, I'd say 50-50, that they're going to use that tax fraud scandal to, uh, to get Schultz out get new leadership in, and uh, then they have to figure out a way to deal with Habeck and Brabach. Get those green, green crazies out of the government, and then Germany, maybe, maybe they can find a way to, uh, to stop the, the impending collapse. And uh, let me sit down here, by the way. And I'm going to show you where I am. It's actually an interesting spot. But... Um, here you have the deputy speaker of the German parliament saying, open up Nord Stream 2. He's exactly right. There's no reason for Germany to suffer. There's no reason for Germany to deindustrialize. Even Bloomberg, even Bloomberg is saying that Germany is undergoing deindustrialization. We've been saying at the Duran that Germany is undergoing deindustrialization for like the last six months. One of the main objectives of this conflict is to, uh, to keep the U.S. in Europe with regards to NATO. Remember the NATO mantra, keep the U.S. in, keep Russia out, keep Germany down. The German people need to realize that this economic war of attrition is not only aimed at Russia, it is aimed at Germany. Absolutely. And uh, even Bloomberg now is saying that Germany is at risk of deindustrialization. Energy inflation is way more dramatic here than elsewhere, said Ralph Stoffels, chief executive officer of BIW ISO Lierstoff, a maker of silicon parts for auto, aerospace, and appliance industries. I fear gradual deindustrialization of the German economy, he added, as quoted by Bloomberg. Prices for gas and electricity in Germany have reportedly more than doubled in the past two months. Oh yeah, absolutely they've doubled. The, uh, the producer prices have hit record highs. The largest rise in German producer prices since 1949. Germans paid 37.2% more to producers for commercial goods in July compared to the same month the previous year, according to new data from the country's federal statistics agency released on Friday. The new report from the Destatus Agency indicates that natural gas and electricity are the main drivers of the increase in prices. More than half of the increases for July could be attributed to energy costs. The year-on-year -year increase was just 14.7%, when excluding them, producer prices, producer prices, the amount charged for goods by sellers, are considered one of the clearest indicators of inflation. The highest increase, the largest increase since 1949. And uh, absolutely, this is, uh, this is a, a big time indicator of massive inflation coming to Germany. It's costing a lot more to make things. And if it's costing a lot more to make things, well, those, uh, those products are gonna cost a lot more for the end consumer. So Germany still has a chance. They still have some time, though the window is like 
Ooh, it's like that much open. The door has like a crack, just a crack left before it completely closes. But if Germany can somehow quickly say within this month, if they can somehow get Schultz out, get Brabeck and Habach out or marginalized, give them new posts, make Brabeck the minister of, uh, of culture or something like that. Just put her in some, in some office, some office that just deals with domestic stuff that, that doesn't deal with really critical things. And, and, and Habeck just, I don't know, downgrade Habeck as well. Move him to some ministerial post that doesn't have to deal with such important issues. Um, and, and then get new people in. Germany can still save itself. Open up Nord Stream 2 right away. Call up Russia and say sorry. Yeah, say sorry. That's it. And if the Biden White House throws a hissy fit, throws a hissy fit, for God's sakes, it's the Biden White House. No one takes him seriously. Why should Germany? Why should Germany go through this industrial through this deindustrialization? Why should Germany Germany destroy itself so many decades and decades? of uh, building up Germany into this industrial powerhouse and you throw it all away for what? For Alensky? Man, unbelievable. Even Ukraine is making fun of Germany, even Ukraine. And they are calling Germany drug addicts with regard to their dependence for natural gas. Kiev's foreign minister, Dmitry Kuleba, condemned the German addiction to Russian gas on Friday. The Ukrainian transit operator said it was willing to carry all the Russian energy Berlin might need for a fee. The conflicting communication from Kiev came after a senior Bundestag official called for the opening of the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. And as Gazprom informed the EU that Nord Stream 1 would be shut down for maintenance at the end of August. Yeah, Nord Stream 1 is going to be shutting down for another three days. I'm going to get to that real quick. Uh, calls by some German politicians to launch Nord Stream 2 for a little while and close it later later are totally irrational, Kuleba tweeted out on Friday in English. This resembles drug addiction when a person says just one more time without realizing the devastating consequences of each last time. Addiction to Russian gas kills. Okay, yeah. So it's just better to have our people freeze to death. It's better to deindustrialize. It's better to just have mass poverty. And, uh, and destroy everything that Germany has worked so hard building just so that, uh, that Alensky can buy another mansion or for, uh, or for propping up uh, the Ukraine regime. It's, it's worth destroying Germany to prop up another regime which Germany, when you get down to the, to, to the facts of it all, for which Germany has no treaty, no obligation, nothing that commits it to destroying itself for this country. Nothing. People in Germany, you don't have a, a treaty with Ukraine. You just don't. You don't have an economic, military, we're going to save you from invasion treaty. It's not there. It doesn't exist. Unless it's been hidden somewhere in, in Angela Merkel's dresser drawers or something. I don't know. But I haven't seen this treaty. As a matter of fact, Germany, what you did have is you were a signatory to the Minsk Accords, which obligated you to force Ukraine to abide by the Minsk Agreement. If you had done that, Germany, you wouldn't be in this mess. Thank you very much, Angela Merkel. Germany and France, by the way. So Russia, going back to uh, the statement from this article that said that Russia is going to be closing Nord Stream 1 for a couple of days. Yeah, it is. Absolutely, that's what's going to happen. And, uh, and Gazprom has said that it's going to close it down for scheduled maintenance. Russian energy giant Gazprom announced on Friday that transit of natural gas to the European Union via the Nord Stream 1 pipeline will be halted from August 31st to September 2nd for maintenance. On August 31st, the only working Trent 60 gas compressor unit will be shut down for three days for maintenance. The company stated, noting that all repairs will be carried out jointly with specialists from German manufacturer Siemens. Gazprom added that upon completion of work and the absence of technical malfunctions of the unit, gas transportation will be restored to the level of 33 million cubic meters per day, representing roughly 20% of the pipeline's full capacity. The statement says, upon completion of work 
and the absence of technical malfunctions of the unit, gas transportation will return back to that 20%, which means a couple of things. The first thing is that Germany still hasn't solved the gas turbine issue that it had with Canada, and that's why they're still at 20%. They still have not managed to get that turbine back to Russia when all the German government has to do in coordination with Canada is to say that the turbine and the equipment uh, in Nord Stream 1 is exempt from sanctions. That's all you have to do. Just come out with a statement, with documentation, saying that all the equipment for Nord Stream 1 is exempt from sanctions, and the Russians will take that turbine. They can't do it. They can't bring themselves to do it. They can't figure out a way to do that. So it's going to get stuck at 20%. And the other part of this statement is that after this maintenance is done, at the end of three days, in the absence of technical malfunctions, things will be returned back to 20%. What are the chances that uh, that Gazprom may find some more technical malfunctions and may have to extend the maintenance to uh, more than three days? Place your bets. Why are you doing this to yourselves, Germany? Why are you doing this to yourselves? And Ukraine is openly mocking you for it. They're calling you drug addicts because you need cheap, reliable, stable, natural gas to keep your people and your industries safe and healthy and warm. And Ukraine is telling you, no, we disapprove of you keeping your industries prosperous and your people safe and warm. And if you dare do that, then you're a drug addict. <laughs> Man. What a freaking mess. And what an easy solution to solve for Germany. What an easy slam dunk solution to solve. But Olaf Scholz is such a freaking weakling that he just can't do it. He can't bring himself to do it. Meanwhile, the situation in Ukraine is not so good. According to the Telegraph, Ukraine only has three months to prevent a winter betrayal, a winter betrayal. If the war goes into deep freeze, Alensky is likely to come under increasing pressure from his allies. This is according to the Telegraph. The, uh, the Ukraine, the Russian Ukrainian conflict is about to go into deep freeze and this will affect both sides, writes the British newspaper Telegraph on the battlefield. Winter tends to favor the defender while it is harder for the attacker to move forward. This will allow the Ukrainian army to hold on to what it has, but it will prevent it from recapturing anything from the vast territories under Russian control. What in the hell has Ukraine captured? Riddle me this, Daily Telegraph. What in the hell has Ukraine captured from the vast amount of territories, roughly 25% of Ukraine that Russia has captured? What has Ukraine captured? Are you still waiting for the great Kherson counteroffensive telegraph? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, that, that Kherson counteroffensive, counter that's happening, you know, sometime in 2028. Uh, therefore, winter will have a strategic impact on the outcome of the conflict in Europe. And Ukraine will most likely lose there. Europeans are accustomed to cheap Russian energy, accustomed to cheap Russian energy. In June, Russia cut gas supplies to Europe by 60%. As winter approaches, Countries are scrambling to mitigate the economic damage to their already undermined economies. The massive outburst of discontent will not go unnoticed by politicians and will force them to reconsider their already faltering support for Ukraine and sanctions against Russia. Moscow knows how to escalate the pressure until the European countries give in, up, up to and including a complete blackout. Threatened with the extreme measure, President Putin will Beckon the world community with a ceasefire on favorable terms at the G20 summit in November. Leaders will be tempted to accept Putin's peace proposal and withdraw their support for Elensky. For President Biden, this proposal will sound no less tempting than for his European counterparts because America, too, is suffering serious economic damage. Oh, yeah. So the Telegraph knows that Putin's going to go to the G20 and he's going to address all the G20 countries and say, ha, ha, ha. Now that I've got you where I want you and I've and I'm about to turn off all the lights and you're going to suffer, submit to my proposal for a ceasefire on favorable Russian terms. Do it now or else 
I am going to turn off all the gas for all of Europe. <laughs> oh, that Putin, that evil mastermind genius Putin, who controls all of the United States and all of Europe, but according to the Telegraph, can't beat uh, a flower, a flower smoking clown puppet comedian in Ukraine. Okay. Okay. So, um, yeah. This is, this is ridiculous from the Telegraph. Of course, they don't mention, once again, why Europe and the U.S. are in this mess. It's not because of the conflict in Ukraine. It's because of the dumb sanctions that they decided to place on Russia, which didn't work out so well. The Telegraph doesn't admit that. And they don't admit that uh, the reason for uh, the energy shortage in Europe is because of, uh, of this turbine issue, which was... Uh, which was brought about because of Germany and Canada unable to, to figure a simple solution like a gas turbine going back to Russia out. I mean, I can't, the, the, this is so easy to solve. Turn on Nord Stream 2, problem solved. <laughs> What's so hard? Say that the gas turbine is sanction proof. What's so hard? Call up Trudeau and just tell him to get the paperwork. That's all you have to do. Trudeau, Trudeau, I need you to get paperwork in order to say that the gas turbine is exempt from sanctions. Uh, is that all I need to do, Olaf? And then everything's going to be okay? Germans aren't going to freeze? That's all you have to do, Trudeau. Can you do that? Uh, well, one second, Olaf. Let me put you on hold. Uh, ring, ring. Uh, yes, Justin? Uh, hi, Anthony. Anthony Blinken. Yes, Justin. This is Anthony. Yeah. Um, look, uh, I've got Olaf on the other line on hold. And uh, he says that all of the uh, Germany's gas problems will be solved if I just exempt the turbine from Russian uh, sanctions and submit that paperwork to uh, to the evil uh, Vladimir Putin. Uh, one second, Justin. Let me put you on hold. Uh, ring, ring. Uh, yes, this is Klaus Schwab. Uh, Klaus, this is Anthony at the Department of State. Uh, yes, Anthony. What can I do for you? Uh, I've got Trudeau on hold, and he's got Olaf Schultz on hold, and he's telling me that if I just allow Justin to exempt the turbine from sanctions, then Germany won't freeze. Is that okay with you, Klaus? Um, Anthony, this goes against the um, Great Reset Agenda. Therefore, I say, nine, yet, no, okay, nine, no, I do not give permission. Uh, okay, Klaus, let me get back to Justin. Justin? Thanks for waiting. Uh, listen, I was just on the phone with Klaus and uh, he said it's a no-go. Oh, okay, Anthony. Well, thank you very much. Cheerio. Uh, hey, Olaf? Yes, Justin? Olaf, I was on the phone with Anthony at Department of State and he was on the phone with Klaus at the WEF. And they said that I can't do this. The Great Reset Agenda has to stay on course and Germany has to be deindustrialized in accordance with the WEF plan. Sucks being you, Olaf. Bye. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> so that's what's going on there. Let's, uh, let's do a couple more stories and get into the clown world. The clown world was in Santa Marin and uh, Finland, even though that could have been a clown world. But uh, do we have any more stories here? Let's see. Let's uh, see. Oh, the U.S. is providing another $775 million in weapons for Kiev. And they're going to actually be providing 1,000 javelins and javelinas. <laughs> javelins and javelinas. Yeah, those things. They're going to be offloading those useless weapons because no one wants to buy those anymore. And so 
you know, the U.S. has a bunch of inventory of these javelins and I guess they have to get rid of them. But they're also going to be providing something known as harm anti-radar missiles. Now, um, let me read you something that I saw on the Intel Slava Telegram channel with regards to these harm missiles. This is interesting. The, uh, and this is a Telegram channel older than EDA, but I saw this on, I'm, I'm sorry, I saw this on Slaviangrad, and they're taking it from another Telegram channel older than EDA. So I don't know what the qualifications of this analysis are, to be honest. I'm just reading it because um, I think it's interesting. The supply of American harm anti-radar missiles to Ukrainians opened the way for aviation weapons. And here it is interesting to assess the prospects for how and how the United States can still, can still support the independent, and that's in quotes, the independent Air Force. We do not take direct del deliveries of aircraft into account. If it is planned, it is clearly in a more distant future. Such deliveries must be large scale for the desired effect. At least dozens of aircraft which require preparation, firstly, and is fraught with escalation to an unacceptable level in second. Most likely, these may be satellite-guided GDAM, GDAM type bombs. Their use does not require serious intervention in the avionics of the aircraft. The main scope of work will be to adopt the hard points for attaching Western ammunition. Everything a bomb needs to hit its targets is either on the bomb itself or on a GPS satellite in orbit. Taking into account the density of our air defense and the presence of fighters in the air, the appearance of GDAM among Ukrainians, which allow attacking targets from 30 and in the GDAM ER-1 version from almost 100 kilometers will greatly facilitate the actions of Ukrainian aircraft that have survived and what they managed to get from abroad from former users of the MiG-29. Moreover, if the harm missiles mentioned above have already been transferred to Ukraine, this means that the United States does not have any psychological obstacles to transferring guided bombs to Kiev. So it looks like, if I understand this correctly, from this analysis, if this analysis is correct, these harm uh, radars could be used in the future to allow more, uh, more damaging, more lethal, missiles delivered from uh from mix that could be the purpose of these harm uh of this harm radar system if that is that is indeed the case but we're looking at something further down in uh, in the future these anti-radar missiles sorry these harm anti-radar missiles so experts in the comments down below let me know if that analysis was correct let me know if this could be one of the use cases for these harm anti-radar missiles or if this is just another uh, useless type of uh, weapons delivery to ukraine in order to just keep the military industrial complex uh, happy let me know in the comments down below but i th i thought it is worth uh, mentioning this and uh, i know that there will be a lot of experts in the comments who will have a better understanding as to whether these anti-radar uh, systems are indeed something that could cause concern for the Russian military now or in six months or in a year's time, if, uh, if we're even talking about this in six months or a year's time. With that said, let's, uh, let's do a clown world real quick. Before I get to the clown world, there's a story about uh, coming out from Politico where they talk about how um, the Department of State is urging Congress not to push forward with branding Russia a state sponsor of terrorism. And so Politico and the Department of State are saying if uh, Congress does this, then it's going to really uh, damage uh, many things with regards to cooperation with Russia on an international level, an international scope, including nuclear treaties, fighting uh, terrorism uh, around the world, uh, all kinds of different things that... Uh, that are going to be damaged and are going to to, uh, to provide serious difficulties for the U.S. 
if Nancy Pelosi and her crazies in Congress approve the sponsorship of uh, Russia as a state sponsor of terrorism. And Politico is noting this. The Department of State is saying this. Nancy Pelosi, don't do this. You're going to end up hurting the U.S. more than you're going to end up helping the U.S. But when has this ever stopped? the hysterical nutcases in Congress from uh, making bad decisions like branding Russia a state sponsor of terrorism. Keep in mind, I think either Latvia or Lithuania or maybe both have already crossed that bridge. And so if uh, the Baltic states are doing it, why not the United States? Isn't that the pattern? So let's, uh, let's get to a clown world. I'm just reading an article that, that, that I just uh, stumbled on right now, which says Russia will see a 30 percent year year, a 30 percent year on year increase in energy earnings due to higher oil export volumes, coupled with rising natural gas prices. Word is reported on a Wednesday, citing a document from the German economy minister. According to the report, the country's revenues are expected to jump to 30 to $333.7.5 billion this year, which will help shore up the Russian economy in the face of Western sanctions. <laughs> the document predicted that energy export earnings will ease to $255.8 billion next year, but will still be higher than the 2021 figure of $244.2 billion. So in summary, as I reported a couple of days ago, when I said that Russia is selling less product and making more money, well, this has now been confirmed by Reuters. So Bloomberg has been confirming what the Duran has been saying for six months now, which is that Germany is being deindustrialized and Reuters, Reuters is confirming the chart that I reported just, uh, just the other day, which said that Russia is making all kinds of money while selling less and, uh, that's called winning, <laughs> everybody. That is called winning. The video tapes that you see, the video uh, footage that you see of the, uh, the Finnish prime minister that are leaked, that's called losing. The deindustrialization of uh, Germany, that is called losing. Uh, trying to brand Russia as a state sponsor of terror, that's called losing. All of that is called losing and losing in a big, big way. So let's do a clown world and uh, let me just tell you where I, where I am. And I'm, I'm kind of walking, I was walking towards the Acropolis, towards the National Gardens and I saw these mosaics just kind of, kind of here, right here, which I thought was really interesting. You know, you have these mosaics just, uh, just in the middle of, of the street, I guess. And I wonder what these looked like back in the day. I bet you they were really, really beautiful. Like really beautiful designs. And I wonder what this was. Can you imagine that this was probably a place? Like, take a look around. Let me show you what I see here. Just like imagine that this was, you can see like the base of a column right here. Imagine this being like a place where like philosophers or people, you know, like discourse, people were talking about politics and the world events and they were standing like right here and they were addressing the audience maybe right over there. I don't know. Maybe that's what this is. Maybe not. But that's what it looks like to me. Like just a place where people gathered and, and discussed and maybe someone was right over there kind of talking about the news or debating or something like that back in the day. And everyone was sitting like right over here, kind of listening. Anyway, let's do a quick, quick uh, clown world. And this clown world, courtesy of the great Robert Barnes. And if you are not following Robert on his uh, locals channel with Viva Frey, you are missing out. Definitely check out their, uh, their news feed, their channel on locals. It has all kinds of great news and it has all kinds of great clown worlds. And this is a quick clown world, but it's a good one, <laughs> a really good one. And this is a tweet from Baron of the Tega. And he says, 
Ukrainians vandalized a war memorial in Latvia with paint. Turned out it was a memorial to Latvians who died during the 1917 independence war. <laughs> oh boy, let me put up a tweet of what they vandalized. From what I understand, this is what they vandalized. This memorial right here, and they painted it with uh, the colors of uh, the Ukraine flag. This tweet says, uh, in Latvia, the Rogels painted the Moscow monument, which turned out to be a memorial stone in honor of the Latvian soldiers of the Bauska regiment who were killed during the battles for the independence of Latvia in 1917 with yellow and blue paint. Oops, real friendly fire. <laughs> oh boy, well, you know, <laughs> what can you say? <laughs> what can you say? It's a clown world, everybody. And uh, yeah, the hysteria knows no bounds. They don't even know what the hell they're uh, damaging anymore, do they? They have no clue. Every monument now is is Russian propaganda. Everybody that uh, that tweets condemnation or has an opinion about uh, Santa Marin and says she should act more dignified and she shouldn't be partying it up and dirty dancing with uh, rock stars, they're they're Putin apologists and they're KGB agents. Isn't that the way things are now with all of these uh, crazies? Anyway, I'm going to end the video there, everybody. The Durant.locals.com, Odyssey, Bitch Shoot, Rumble, Telegram. Check us out on Telegram. And uh, what else? Alexander's channel, the Durant's channel. And I think that is it. What a beautiful statue. Take care, everybody.